This is the Sonoff S20 Wi-Fi smart socket. Uh, I've got a bunch of them around my house. They're really cheap on Amazon. They're only about 20 quid each. Uh, they also come with a great feature where you can actually change the firmware that's on it. Somebody's written a piece of firmware called Tasmota and it allows you to remove all the manufacturer's software and use some open source software instead and use your own infrastructure to control the socket. Uh, I want to show you how you can open these up and use the little header inside to reprogram the firmware uh, with the Tasmota firmware. So you're going to need a screwdriver, Phillips one, small Phillips. You're going to need one of these USB to serial devices. Uh, this one's called the FTDI 232. It's important to have one that's that works with 3.3 volts because the ESP8266 chip within the Sonoff S20 is not compatible with 5 volts. So this one here is actually switchable between 5 volts and 3.3 volts. It's currently set to 3.3. Uh, we're also going to need four jump wires. Uh, I use these. I found this is the easiest way of connecting up to the, the socket inside without having to solder anything on. And also use a breadboard. Uh, it can be even smaller than this one if you need. That's all you have. You only need enough to fit this in here. Like that. So if we open this up, there's only three little screws on the back. And then it should pop open reasonably easily. So this is the header we use to reprogram the device. The ESP8266 processor is underneath this circuit board. Uh, you can actually access it using these two screws here. Uh, although there's no, no real need to take this out. Uh, because all you need is access to these and access to this button here. So what we'll do is get our breadboard. work out which of these outputs are which. So on the right hand side here is ground. So let's use the black one for that. Uh, skip one and then it's VCC. So let's use the red one. Then we have TX and RX. So we use green for TX and yellow for RX. Alright, so now we've got that. We can see the arrow, hopefully at the top here. The arrow here points to VCC. And the second one down points to RX on this device. So our TX from here, from our USB serial device, will go to the RX here. The next one down is TX, and then we have ground at the bottom. So I'm going to grab my laptop now, and I'll install the software, show you how to do that, uh, and then reprogram the firmware, and then take you through, a, through it with the screencast. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is load up Google, type in Sonoff Tasmota ESP tool. There's a few different ways of flashing this firmware. Uh, one of which uses the Arduino IDE. Uh, I found the easiest way of, you, of doing it is using the ESP tool. Uh, there's also a couple of ways to install ESP tool itself. Uh, if you don't have it already, you can you can download Python from here. It basically goes through the instructions on on this website. The way I'm going to do it is install it using Python because that's quickest for me. Uh, but there's also an ex executable file here, so you can do it without using Python. Uh, it also runs on Windows, Linux, and OS X. So I'm going to load up a terminal. I'm going to use virtual environment because it makes everything easier for me.
Okay, so now I should have esptool.py, which is my command line interface to using this Flash program. Uh, I'm also going to plug in the USB to serial adapter, just making sure that the wires aren't touching anything. And I'm just going to check where that ended up. So it should be on dev tty usb 0. Yep. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is download the Tasmota firmware. You can use this link to do that. Uh, we only need one of these bin files because we're not going to use the source code here. Uh, I'm in the UK, so I'm going to use that one. Actually, I'm an idiot. Unless you speak Ukrainian, you probably don't want the UK bin file. If you speak English, the one you want is sonoff.bin. So I'm going to copy that and grab that. Okay. Uh, the next thing you want to do before we connect up the S20 itself is just make sure that we've got this command ready to press enter on. The last thing you want to do when you're holding these cables in is actually have to type something. So grab this, and paste it in. Two things I'm going to need to change. In my case, I'm not using Windows, I'm using Linux, so I'll change the COM port to a TTY USB 0, and then change sonoff.bin to whichever file we just downloaded. Okay, so that's ready. I'm just going to now connect up the, the wires. So this bit's a little bit fiddly because we have to hold the, the wires in uh, while we're actually flashing the device. It's obviously you can actually solder a header into here and then connect them up, but this is quicker, uh, it doesn't require any, any tools, and it pretty much works every time. So uh, let's grab our TX on the uh, USB serial and plug it into the RX on our S20. I think that's right, TX, yep, yeah. TX is the RX, and then the RX on our serial device, plug it into the TX on the S20. And finally, if you can find it, the VCC power lead. So before you plug this in, you're going to want to be able to press the button at the same time, so it's a little bit fiddly. Hold that in with this finger, and then press the button, hold it down, and plug in VCC. Now hopefully that will be in flash mode now. So you can see these, I've got all these in here, if I can focus on that. Holding them in, now I just press enter on the keyboard, and hopefully it will connect. Okay, perhaps not on this this time. So, remove the VCC, hold down the button, put the VCC back in until you've got it ready, and then let go. Let's try again. There we go. So now it's uploading the firmware. It takes a little while and you've got to try and make sure not to move any of these cables while it's happening. There's obviously a chance of ending up with corrupt firmware this way if you this way if you accidentally move something or disconnect it. Uh, I think it does check a check some at the end, so I think it's probably okay. Uh, I've never had any problems doing it like this. There we go, it's done. So now we can remove VCC again, remove all the rest of them, and we should have now the Tasmota firmware on our S20. So before we plug it in, plugging it in now would be a bad idea because we have actual mains voltage exposed in here. I'm just going to put it all back together put the front cover back on, and then we can go through the process of adding it to our Wi-Fi. So let's just put it all back together.
Okay, now we've got it back together, what we can do now is plug it in and turn it on. We now want to set it into the access point mode so that we can connect to it with Wi-Fi, then we can go to its website and we can actually configure this to connect to our usual Wi-Fi. So what we're going to do is press the button four times and you can see the light go, go solid for a bit there and then switch over to our laptop and try and connect to this over Wi-Fi. Okay, so now the device is back together and turned on, it's listening for connections over Wi-Fi. So if we connect to it with our laptop, uh, if we search for the Wi-Fi is available, this one is Sonoff1684. It's important to remember that number because we'll use it to find the device later on on the network. So if we connect to that, then we go back to our browser, Go to 192.168.4.1 and we should get access to the device's control panel. Uh, from here we can actually scan for Wi-Fi networks, connect to the one we want and enter the password. If we hit save now, it will save it and restart the device so we need to connect back to our original home Wi-Fi. And now we need to find the device on our network. So in my case, I'm going to go to my router and I'm going to see which IP address it's been assigned. So if we have a look in the DHCP leases here, we can see that it's Sonoff-1684, the same as the one we connected to before. Uh, it's been assigned 10.0.0.186. So if we go to that IP address with our browser, we then get access to the control panel for the device. We can turn it on and off from here, and we can change configuration options. So you can actually access, you can add other modules to this device. So on one of mine I have a temperature and humidity sensor. So there's all sorts of things you can use that header for, which we actually use to reprogram the device. You can connect it to MQTT, which is what I do as well, and this is how I control it over my network. Uh, there's plenty of other things you can do as well, which I don't use, so I'm not going to tell you about. If you go to the Sonoff Tasmota wiki, then it will explain all of the things you can do with it, and I'll leave you to go through that and see what else you can do.